Hi, welcome to Physionic, where we learn the body from the macro to the micro. If that's something you think you'd be interested in, then consider subscribing. In today's exam and content, the last exam and piece to cover this particular paper, which I will have linked in the description box for you to look over yourself, we will be discussing how fasting or fasting mimicking diet has an impact on health span, which is different from lifespan, but we will also be covering lifespan. So both of those. Health span is essentially how good your life is in terms of your physical health throughout your life and lifespan is the actual amount of time by which you are alive. So investigating both, how fasting has an impact on both. And without further ado, let's jump into this exam in peace. So for this last piece of content related to this paper, they looked at two different models. One of them is mice, which I've gone over many, many times already, but let's go over it one more time. It's four days of fast mimicking dieting or fasting, plus a seven day refeed in which the mice are allowed to consume as much food as they would like. And these mice are all aged matched, meaning that the control mice are going to be uh, eating as much as they want, whenever they want, they are not fasted in any regard, and they have to be the same age as the fasting mice when compared uh, from graph to graph. Now the second model is using a yeast model. Now we're just gonna briefly discuss this yeast model, and you might be thinking, well, why in the world would we even discuss yeast? But as an incredibly preliminary step, as just a, another model that you can actually make some genetic modifications to, you can do this to mice as well, but it's much easier to make genetic modifications to yeast, uh, you're able to glean some information, at least some mechanistic data and some kind of preliminary information related to how fasting might impact uh, these cells or cells in general, the living tissue. Now for the yeast protocol, they uh, plated yeast cells and then they had, they switched the media on and off for 48 hours. So having kind of intermittent fasting periods. Now of course you can't have the media be off for extended periods of time because well the cells just die. Uh, simple as that. So they're going to of course starve much much faster than an actual organism that can rely on all of its physiological systems to maintain its life. The cells are, well, essentially on their own, so they kind of have to survive on their own. So you can't have them uh, be off of media for you know three days or four days like you might with the mice because you're gonna come back and you're gonna have completely dead cells and they're gonna be, they're gonna be dead for quite a while already. So you've got your yeast condition and your mouse condition. Now let's jump into the results. All right, figures 5A and B, they look at lifespan. So how long do these mice survive compared to their controls? And it seems that fasting, mimicking dieting or fasting seems to have a positive impact on the average lifespan. So more mice are living longer. However, the maximum lifespan in which you reach your absolute highest level, the oldest mouse or the oldest mice, uh, did not change from control. So the control mice live to be just as long in their maximum levels as opposed to their average levels in which the control mice did worse than the fasting mice. In figure 5C, which is something that I've discussed in a previous piece of content looking at cancer and the impact that fasting has on cancer, we're just going to revisit that real quick again and we see that fasting does seem to have a positive impact in terms of longevity. So uh, less mice are dying from cancer over an extended period of time, meaning well their entire life in this situation. So does it have a positive impact on cancer? Well it seems to decrease the risk of neoplasms at least, which uh, isn't necessarily 
necessarily cancer, but it is tumor formation, if that's cancerous or non-cancerous. Now, 5D is where things get really interesting. So far in all these pieces of content, I've discussed how fasting seems to have a positive impact in humans, animals, and, well, we'll see about the yeast. But what seems to happen with fasting in these animals, what they find is that the fasting is detrimental after a particular point, after a particular age point. So right around that 26 to 26 and a half months of age, which is pretty old for a mouse, you see that fasting deaths tend to increase. So they tend to decrease related to cancer, but they tend to increase in essentially everything else. If you were to equate everything else other than cancer, it seems that the fasting mimicking diet has a detrimental impact compared to the control animals. Not only that, the fasting mimicking dieting is so detrimental that it is a significant, a not statistically significant, it is statistically significant, but it's actually really huge increase in your risk of death, if you're a mouse, uh, for the fasting group. Now what they did is they scaled back from four days of fasting to three days of fasting, and they saw that that extended their life just a little bit more. So then they thought, well, okay, maybe if we cut it out completely after a particular amount of time, and they found that that did not seem to have much of an impact whatsoever. So fasting up to a particular age seems to have all these different benefits, but then moving beyond that seems to have this sudden shift where fasting just does not help whatsoever, and it, it turns out it actually is detrimental. Now switching back over to figures 1A and B where we're going to be looking at yeast models. Again, where you're getting this periodic moving back and forth between uh, nutrient rich media and essentially no nutrients within the other media, so kind of switching back and forth between the fasting and non-fasting conditions. You see that those yeast cells tend to live much longer in terms of their average lifespan as well as their maximum lifespan tends to increase quite substantially. So that is a divergent result compared to the mouse model in which we saw that there was no increase in maximum, but we did see an increase in the average. Then what they wanted to do is check if the deletion of a particular lifespan gene, RIM15, would then change the outcome and they found that no, it did not change the outcome. So there must be a RIM15 independent system by which fasting seems to have a positive impact on yeast cells. And finally, I'd like to focus on figure 1C to look at the robustness of how these yeast cells are able to survive in an incredibly toxic environment. And that toxic environment is hydrogen peroxide. So they used different dosages of hydrogen peroxide and they found that with increasing dosages of hydrogen peroxide, consistently the fasting yeast were far more able to survive, actually a hundred times more able to survive compared to the non-fasting yeast. So can we translate that to humans? Mm, probably not, but still it's a cool experiment to see that uh, there are going to be changes with fasting and pretty profound changes within the cells that are causing this robustness, this ability to survive uh, in an incredibly toxic or highly stressful environment. So based on the data presented, what can we conclude? Well, we can most likely conclude that fasting does not increase maximum lifespan. And the reason we can say that is because in the mouse model we did not see an increase in maximum lifespan which is far more applicable than the yeast model when you go head to head by comparison. Now does that necessarily mean it translates to humans? It could be that it does increase lifespan in humans in terms of the maximum lifespan. But in both conditions we did see that it does increase uh, average lifespan. So the average point, the medium point, tends to move upwards quite considerably uh, when you're looking or 
as in essentially that more of the mice and more of the yeast is surviving uh, longer periods of time. You don't get as much of a discrepancy uh, or as much of a range across the different age conditions. The other thing we can conclude is that in mice, for whatever reason, we see a dramatic shift in how fasting impacts uh, lifespan and it tends to at the very end of life, in kind of the extremes of life, fasting has a detrimental, highly, highly detrimental impact on the survival ability. So it tends to fight against survival and tends to increase the rates of death if a person continues, or I should say a mouse, continues to fast or is forced to fast in that particular point in their life, which is again in the extreme old age. And fasting most likely does improve health span. Uh, we've seen that just because it helps against cancer and of course it helps with moving that medium, that, that average lifespan forward. Uh, most likely that's going to be reflective in health span uh, with health span of course being different from lifespan in terms of health being that you are more capable of doing things. Uh, you have a healthier life. You're not uh, suffering throughout your entire lifespan and your lifespan just being the overall amount of time that you are able to survive. Now that said, however, uh, that is also because of the previous content that we've discussed. I have three other massive pieces of content covering this paper and of course in all those pieces of content you saw how fasting had a supreme impact on many many different factors. So if any of this were to translate, you could say that uh, fasting has a positive impact on health span. It tends to have a positive impact on lifespan up to a point at which point then it reverses and has a detrimental impact on lifespan. So if this, if this were to translate to humans, then in the extremely old age, let's say, you know, 80 years old, 90 years old, then fasting would then have a detrimental impact on those individuals. Can we translate that to humans? The answer is no, we can't. We need more studies on the topic to be actually be able to make that confirmed conclusion. And with that said, folks, that is the last piece of content that we will have on this paper. I hope that you found it informative and I hope, I certainly do hope, that I have the absolute pleasure of speaking with you in the next one. Have a good one, guys. See ya.